I'm Jeremy and I'm here at the TRQ Research and Development Facility today where we test all of our parts on a fleet of vehicles and now I'm going to help you repair yours. We're going to crack these lug nuts loose while the car is on the ground because once we jack up the car it'll be much easier to take these lug nuts off. These are 21 millimeter lug nuts. So now that the car is up in the air we're going to take each one of these lug nuts off and then pull the wheel off. So I've now just taken off all five lug nuts and as you can see the wheel is stuck on the hub. So the easy way to fix this is to put one of the nuts back on, just put it on finger tight, you're just trying to prevent the wheel from not falling off unexpectedly. And then we're going to go to the back side of the wheel and pop it off with a pry bar. We're going to just put it up here against the ball joint and pry against the wheel and as you can see it pops right off. And then we'll take the wheel off the car. Right here is the upper nut for the sway bar end link and you can see it has a hex head in the center of it. So what we want to do is put a hex in the center and then loosen up the nut on the outside. If you just try and loosen the nut the whole thing will spin and you won't make any progress. Um, the other thing is that this is rusty so we're going to throw some uh, rust penetrant on it like that to hopefully make the whole job a little bit easier. So this is a 7 seconds uh, Allen head which is a bit of a strange size for this but it seems to fit best. It may just be that it's a little bit rusty and swollen and not a metric size anymore. Um, but we're going to put it right in the center and then we're going to crack it loose with the 17 millimeter. Alright, so now you can see the nut is coming off. It started to spin, the uh, 732nd size started to spin, and I think that's because there was rust buildup in there. So now we can actually get the right size in there, which is 6 millimeters. 6 millimeters wouldn't fit in there before because there was rust in there. So we'll hold it in place now and continue loosening the nut. All right, now we have the nut off, and we can pull the sway bar right out the back. Sway bar end link, I should say. Now we're going to do the same thing on the bottom of the sway bar end link. I'm going to throw some rust penetrant on it, make it a little easier, and then we'll use our six millimeter um, Allen wrench or Allen head socket in the center, and we'll put a 17 millimeter on the outside. May have to clean some rust out of this though. So the thing that just happened here is I was just turning this and the center of this kind of stripped out. Now it's all rusty, it's sort of expected in New England because everything is rusty. But you can see that when I turn this thing, it's just basically spinning the, uh, on the Allen. So this is stripped out. Good news is there's an easy way to fix this. So since this is an old sway bar link, we're just going to take some locking pliers, put them on the back side like this. And we'll lock them down. Make sure they're nice and tight. And then we should be able to loosen this up. All right, so I swapped out the other locking pliers for a different pair that grabbed the, uh, the inside of this a little bit tighter. And now I'm hoping that I can turn this and get it to come off without the whole thing spinning. And it looks like I can. So Moral is, it takes a little bit of uh, work to get it locked on there just right, but once you get it locked on, um, this nut should be able to come off. So even if you strip out the center, there's always a backup plan. And it looks like now that I've gotten this far, it's actually coming off pretty easily. I'm guessing the rust penetrant had some, some uh, say in that. All right, now we can take it off by hand. All right, there we go. So now the nut's off, and so is the sway bar link. Well, here we have the original one that we just took off and you can see it looks exactly like the TRQ brand that we're putting on. The, this brand, you can see it's got the hex center just like the original one. Come, comes with two brand new nuts to put on there and then of course it's got the nice boots that are held on there tight with uh, metal bands and it's a non-greasable joint so the grease should stay in there for, for the life of the sway bar link. Alright, so we got this new sway bar. I'm going to take the nut off the bottom of it, 
slide it right into place and thread it on my hand. You always want to start it by hand so you don't cross thread it. And then the new nut is an 18 millimeter in this case. So I'm going to use the 18 millimeter wrench. You can use a socket or a wrench. Uh, ratcheting wrench is always good. Um, I'm actually going to switch this out for a socket, I think. So I'm going to use an 18 millimeter wrench and this is a six millimeter Allen socket. So I'm going to hold it in place with the Allen socket and turn it with the wrench. Probably take a little while to do because it's pretty long. All right, so now we're just going to tighten this up. All right, and there we are. Now we can pull out the Allen wrench and the wrench and the bottom is good. Up here at the top, we need to get this through this hole in the strut. And initially, you may feel like you can't get it in there, but if you push this all the way up and turn it a little bit to the front of the, tr uh, front of the car, you can slide it back and then push it down and get it right into the hole. So then we'll put the nut on. We'll always hand tighten it first to make sure we don't do any cross threads. And then we're going to put the Allen socket right in the center and we're going to use an 18 millimeter wrench to tighten this up. Now I think we've just got this tightened up. All right, so now it's tightened up. We can pull the Allen out of the center, hopefully. There we go. Looks like there was some pressure on it. And of course, take the wrench off. All right, so now we can put the wheel back on the car. So we're going to lift it up. Slide it right on. And then always start your lug nuts by hand because you don't want to cross thread them. Now I like to tighten all these up by hand before I actually put the torque wrench on. That one's a little stiff, so we'll go to this one. All right, we've now got our torque wrench set to 76 foot-pounds, and we're going to go ahead and torque this. Uh, now that it's back on the ground, we can torque it and the wheel won't turn. So let's do that. I just like double checking them, just in case I missed one or something. All right, now we're all torqued. 